عبد الله ابن عبد المطلب ابن حاشم and ابن عبد مناف it is recommended highly for the students especially the young ones to learn the lineage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to learn the lineage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Allah the most high chose him from Quraysh the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is al Quraysh. he was from al Quraysh. And they are the best and the most elite of the Arabs. So the Prophet وسلم, was from the Arabs. And from the Arabs, the most elite were the Quraysh. And, from the, and they were from the offspring of Ismail alayhi salam. And he sent him to Al-Ahmar, the red, and Al-Aswad, the black, to the people. This is what the Prophet وسلم, mentioned in one of the hadith where he mentioned Al-Ahmar and Al-Aswad. But the Prophet have said, I have been given five that were not given to anyone before me. Every Prophet was sent to his people specifically, and I was sent to all. Al Ahmad, Red, and Aswad. Ahmad and Aswad. And now, we, Rahimullah, explains what is intended by Al Ahmad is the white from the Ajab, non Arabs, and other than them. And by the Aswad, the Arabs due to the predominance of brownness in them and other than them from those that are, that are dark skinned. So this is Al Aswad, this is Aswad and Ahmad. The Prophet said, I was sent to Aswad and Ahmad. The Prophet was from Banu Hashim, from the clan of Banu Hashim, and from the children of Abdul Muttalib. And Quraysh were the best people. They were the most eloquent in their speech, and why? That's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala chose uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be from amongst, from the offspring of who? Of Ismail Alayhi Salam. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent down upon him the book. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent down to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What did He send down to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The Quran and the Hikmah, the Sun. So the Prophet ﷺ was given the Qur'an and the Hikmah, the Sunnah. Al-Hikmah is also known as the Sunnah. I have been given the Qur'an and something similar to it. The Prophet ﷺ said. And the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And as we know that the Qur'an is a book of principles. And the Sunnah is the explanation of those principles. So the Quran cannot be understood without the Sunnah. There is nobody that can interpret the Quran without the Sunnah. Those who reject the Sunnah understand the Quran with their own understanding. But nobody can understand the Quran without interpreting the Quran. And the Quran is interpreted through the Sunnah of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is known as Al-Hikmah. So he called, what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam call to? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called the people to making worship sincerely and purely for Allah and abandoning what they used to worship besides Allah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given two things. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given the Quran and the Sunnah. And then the Prophet Sallallahu was commanded by Allah to start his da'wah to call to Al-Kufr bin Tawud wal Imanu Billah. Al-Kufr bin Tawud wal Imanu Billah. The first thing that the Prophet Sallallahu called to was to the people of Makkah and the Quraysh, his tribe. The first thing that he called to is Al-Kufr bin Tawud for them to denounce and abandon their idols. So the da'wah of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa started with dispute. The da'wah of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa started with confrontation. And people don't like confrontation. People say, always arguing, always arguing. Why are you always arguing? Subhanallah, the message of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa started with, with dispute. He said, Qulu la ilaha illallah tufli. Say la ilaha illallah. And this statement of the Prophet I'm telling them to say La ilaha illallah, the reason of why the Quraysh rejected to say La ilaha illallah because they understood the meaning of La ilaha illallah. They understood that the meaning of La ilaha illallah was La ma'abuda haqqur illallah. So the Prophet was given the Quran, 
the Prophet was given al hikmah a as sun the Prophet was said to Ahmad and Aswad uh, Ahmad and Aswad Ahmad meaning the non-Arabs and the Aswad meaning the Arabs as now we explain the Prophet was sent by Allah to start his message and the first message that he gave to his people the first da'wah that the Prophet commenced with was something which became a dispute in the whole of Makkah which was Qulu la ilaha illallah so the Prophet who was accepted as being Al-Amin As-Sadiq the truthful one the trustworthy one became the most hated man in Makkah because of one call they changed their position towards him and the Prophet ﷺ told them that the da'wah of the Prophet ﷺ was purely for Allah when your da'wah is purely for Allah sincerely for Allah then you do not care what the people say to you so there are places where you go to give da'wah and because you talk about Tawheed people do not like that you talk about Tawheed so they tell you next time that you can't come to the masjid so they will say to you well we have a busy schedule we are fully booked out why because you come and you talk about Tawheed they say Tawheed is a subject which creates dispute amongst the people and niza or sira no we don't we want you to talk about akhlaq good manners we want you to talk about things which soften the hearts we don't want you to talk about that. don't talk about tawheed in our studies. no talk so if you go somewhere so i went to a place in the north and I sat down and the person of that masjid, I never knew who this person was, one of my students organized a talk for me. So this person came to me before the talk, he shook my hand and he sat down. And he said to me that I just want to tell you about our organization. It wasn't a masjid, it's a center. I said, Tafadda, tell me. You know, we have alhamdulillah a lot of da'wah going on and we are doing this much good work and you know we are trying to bring the Muslim ummah together. I said, alhamdulillah. But we don't want you to talk, can you please make a note and not talk about issues uh, which will divide the Muslim community. I said for example, said, some brothers they talk about Tawheed and they take it to a next level. I said there cannot be no ghulu in Tawheed. Either the person doesn't know how to talk about Tawheed. But if you want me to talk about anything other than Tawheed, then I cannot do so because I only know Tawheed. Iya kan abdu wa iya kan istay. So either you have to let me talk about Tawheed, or you will have to excuse me. And I can't. You cannot dominate what I talk about. And then I said to him, no disrespect, uncle, man with a white beard. I said, uh, how many? Where have you studied? He said, no. I said, do you have any credentials? And this is not in no way to disrespect you. So I know who I am talking to. So if you have not studied the deen, if you have not sat with the ulama, you have, you have no idea, then how do you know what is good and bad for the people? For wallahi, England is in need of tawheed. The masajid of Ahlul Sunnah are in need of tawheed. The most people that are in need of tawheed at this time are Ahlul Sunnah. Because they don't know what Allah has bestowed upon them and they don't know the na'mah or the blessing of a tawheed. How precious this blessing is. So this is what we have that the Prophet ﷺ, he started his da'wah with tawheed and he had, and, he, and the people started hating him. His uncles opposed him. The most people, those who are the most closest to him, started to hate him. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ spoke the truth, haq. And what greater truth, al-haq, kalimatul haq, can they be when it comes to defending the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Can there be anything greater? Is there more haq? Is the haq greater than defending the rights of Allah? Is the haq greater than warning the people against the greatest sin that they can do? La abad. So this is the da'wah of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet told them to stop worshipping idols, stones, trees, prophets and the righteous people, angels and other than that. So he called the people to abandon shirk and he fought them 
so that they may abandon it and that they single out Allah in worship. Allah without any harm. As he Allah SWT said the most high, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَدْعُوا رَبِّي وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِهِ أَحْدًا Say, O Muhammad, I only call upon my Rabb, Allah alone, and I associate none as partners along with him. Surah Jinn, Ayah number 20. And Allah SWT also said, قُلِ اللَّهَ أَعْبُدُ مُخْلِسًا لَهُ دِينِي Say, O Muhammad, Allah alone I worship by doing religious deeds. Sincerely for his sake only, and not to show off, and not to set up rivals with him in worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this was in Surah the Zubar, ayah number 14. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions that the Prophet was commanded to say, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ وَلَا أُشْرِكَ بِهِ إِلَيْهِ أَدْهُ وَإِلَيْهِ مَعَامُ Say, O Muhammad, I am commanded only to worship Allah alone, and not to join partners with him. To him alone I call, and to him is my return. Surah al Ra'd, ayah number 36. So this is with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to who he fought, fought against. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only fought against and did jihad against those who committed shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةً وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ كُلُّهُ And fight them until there is no more fitna. And fitna here is referring to a shirk. Fitna here is referring to a shirk. And this is in agreement to all the Mufassirin. So fitna is also called, shirk is also called fitna. So a person who is indulged in a shirk, in reality is indulged in the biggest fitna. The biggest fitna or calamity that can hit, that can hit any human being is the fitna of shirk. So shirk has been called a fitna. And it is because of this fitna that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to uh, fight against such people. So we see. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sent him as a messenger at 40 years of age. So how old was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he became Prophet and a messenger? 40 years. And he called people to an ikhlas and abandoning the worship of what is what is besides Allah for a period of